Hello everyone and welcome to my first channel update for 2021. I hope you all had a great holiday season and here's to 2021 being better than 2020, am I right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, before we get started, I just wanted to let you all know what exactly we'll be discussing in this video. And I will leave timestamps for the different topics in the description below in case you're only interested in watching specific ones, especially since a couple of these topics will probably end up being fairly lengthy <laughs> because I have a lot to say this time. Um, today I'm going to be updating you on the state of my channel and on me as a creator. And then I'll be telling you about some changes that are coming to the channel this year and my reasons for those changes. And then finally, I will talk about some future content that I've got in the works, which I am very excited about. All right, so let's get started. The state of my channel and me. Well, uh, things are going okay, I guess. Um, by okay, I mean... I'm still uploading content a couple times a, a week, uh, but but I like to use these channel update videos uh, as a way to be perfectly honest with you guys, since I believe that you deserve to know what goes on behind the scenes, you know, especially if you're a patron, um, you know, who is investing more than just time into my content. So here it is, <laughs> the honest truth. I've lately been a bit um, how shall I say, burned out. Although that's not a completely accurate term, as you know, I'm not burned out with my channel in general, I'm just burned out on certain types of content. And you may have noticed that my content the last several months hasn't been very, well, varied. <laughs> I've been mainly just uploading my currently running Let's Play series, which has been ARC until it ended a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, replaced with the Fallout 76 roleplay season 2 and also The Last of Us part 2. And I really haven't done much of anything else for a while now. And and there are several reasons for this, some of which I've covered already in other uh, recent channel updates. Um, mainly, I've been super busy in my real life, so I haven't had time to focus on making extra content besides my currently running Let's Plays. But it, it does go a little deeper than that, and I haven't mentioned it before because back then I, I hadn't really put a finger on it yet or come up with a solution for it. But now I have, and that is mainly what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So I'm going to try to explain this as efficiently as possible. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of cause and effect over the last year that has led me to where I am right now. And explaining one part of it is really difficult without going into the rest of it. So I ask that you just bear with me as I try to get my thoughts out, since I've never really talked about this before. And I'm kind of going to be burying my soul just a little bit. So I'll, I'll probably be fumbling a lot. So here goes. Yeah, if I can even figure out a place to start. Well... First, I'm sure you've all noticed that I haven't been doing any build videos or tips and tricks videos in quite a long time. Uh, I think my last build video was like six months ago, and, and my last tips and tricks was almost that long ago too. Uh, to put it simply, I haven't been doing them because I have been extremely burned out. Not just on making build videos, but also with Fallout 76 itself. Um, I, it's, it started gradually, um, you know, as all things do, I, I tried to fight it, you know, to get in new inspiration. Um, I tried looking on at other people's builds or looking at Pinterest for ideas and, and that worked for a little while, but the burnout came back pretty quickly after that. Um, and I, and I thought maybe if Bethesda just would release some cool new building kits or items in the Atomic Shop, then I could get inspiration from those. But of course, that means waiting for them to release new stuff, yeah, which they did eventually do. They did release some things that I thought I could do videos about. And I even spent time um, tinkering with these things, uh, you know, seeing what I could make. But the inspiration just wasn't there and everything I came up with was garbage and so I just never made videos about it and it wasn't until recently that I started to finally realize what was really going on here 
what was really causing this burnout. And it wasn't from lack of inspiration or from lack of new stuff to build with, but rather it was from an overall burnout or disillusionment with the game itself. And, you know, this came on gradually too. So, so gradually I didn't even notice until the last straw was put on my back. And then I knew that I was just sick of Fallout 76 and I had no desire to play it anymore. And as of the making of this video, it has been four months since I last played the game outside of recording for the Fallout 4, uh, Fallout 76 roleplay. And before you get scared that that means the Fallout 76 roleplay is going to be affected by this, don't worry. It's not going anywhere. I'm not burned out on the roleplay. I still very much enjoy getting together with the, with the cast and recording new episodes. I, I know that might sound a little contradictory, and it's difficult to explain why, but it, you know, it's true. <laughs> so, so now I'm just, I just want to take a moment to explain why I got burned out because to be honest, I don't think I would have got burned out if Fallout 76 as it is today was the game I played last year. The game has gone through a ton of change. Um, in 2020, mainly, and you know, and many of the changes have been major, uh, whole new quests and game mechanic upgrades and new features. You know, it's almost unrecognizable from the game we all started playing after the initial release. And most of these changes have been big improvements, but some, in my opinion, have not been. And it's these not so positive changes that have greatly, if not completely, contributed to my burnout. So. Let's just rewind a little bit and I'll tell you just what I mean. Uh, so it all started back when I started running out of ideas for new builds to make videos about. Um, like I mentioned before, I hoped that the Atomic Shop would release some cool new thing that I could feature in a video. But in order to use said cool new things, I needed to be able to buy them. And for that, I needed atoms. So I started doing the daily and weekly challenges religiously so I could earn as many atoms as possible. I would spend at least two hours every evening doing the dailies and on two separate accounts, mind you, because I had my main account, which is what I used for my building, and I had my Karen account, which is what I used for the roleplay. And I wanted to earn atoms on both of those accounts since we would often use some atom shop stuff for the roleplay. And this was fine for a long time. I really enjoyed doing it because most of the time I wasn't doing it alone. I usually played with Darth Mollian, who plays the character Jack in the roleplay. And since he also enjoyed doing the dailies every day, we'd do them together and help each other out, since they were often easier to compete uh, to complete uh, with more than one person. And doing this allowed me to earn enough atoms every week that I was able to buy pretty much anything I wanted from the atom shop when new stuff came out. You know, I usually had around 4,000 atoms per account, and it usually stayed around that number since I would earn them around the same rate that I would spend them since I didn't buy everything that came out each week, only the stuff I thought would be good in a new bill. So, so this is what I did for many, many months, uh, even close to a year, I think. But it eventually started wearing me down since I would spend two hours every night doing this. And it was the only two hours I had in my daily schedule to play games for fun or for any reason other than recording. You know, I never had time to play any other games or to even play Fallout 76 for any other reason than to do daily challenges. I never had time to finish quests or try out new quests that were added by updates or do seasonal events or anything. All I did for nearly a year were daily challenges. And it got to be you know, pretty repetitive and boring, let me tell you. And also, I often stayed up way too late to get the challenges done since nighttime was the only time I had in my schedule to play games. And staying up late to play a game is okay to do once in a while, but if you're doing it every day for a year, it gets to be a problem as it basically changed my sleep schedule. I was staying up too late and getting up too late and it ended up affecting my family life and the time I had to spend with my kids. So obviously it started to be a problem. So I finally decided that I would start devoting some of my Patreon money each month toward buying atoms. 
since um, I would only be buying them to get new stuff to make more content for the channel. So I considered it an investment into the channel. And uh, this allowed me to relax quite a bit in regards to completing daily challenges and trying to earn atoms in the game. Uh, you know, so that pressure was gone. So I would only do daily challenges if I knew it would only take a couple minutes. Like, you know, for instance, you know, there was a daily challenge to drink a Nuka cherry. And if I happened to have a Nuka cherry on me, then yeah, I'd go ahead and do it. However, if I didn't have a Nuka cherry on me, then I wouldn't bother to go look for one like I would have before. So it just relieved a lot of pressure. And it opened up more time for me to do other things in the game and to not stay up so late trying to finish those last couple challenges to get those last few atoms. I was able to go to bed earlier. I was able to get up earlier. Things were looking up. And then Bethesda decided that my life wasn't complicated enough. So they gave us an update that added a new feature called Seasons. <laughs> And for those of you who haven't played Fallout 76, I will give you a brief description of what seasons are. Basically, it completely overhauled and changed the way daily and weekly challenges work. Instead of awarding atoms for completing each challenge, they now award score. And score is accumulated similar to XP. And once you earn a certain amount of score, you rank up on your scoreboard, which looks kind of like an old fashioned retro game board. Anyway, each rank on the board, when unlocked, will award you with a prize. And these can be anything from a new weapon or, or armor skin, or a new photo frame, or, or a pose, or caps, or, or scrap kits, and, and even atoms. And also workshop items that you can build in your camp. And there are 100 levels on the scoreboard, and you unlock them one at a time by earning score. And the only way to get the items on the board is to earn score and unlock them. But there's a time limit, um, and I'm not sure exactly how much time it is, something like 10 weeks or something. I don't, don't quote me on that. I don't remember. Um, but um, if you aren't able to complete the scoreboard within that time frame, then you basically just lose out on all the rewards because they, they go away. Um, they do have some of the rewards for sale afterwards that you can buy with gold bullion, I think. I never did it, though, since none of the things I wanted came for sale. So anyways... I really wanted some of the items on the scoreboard, like the greenhouse build set and whatnot. Um, I had several cool ideas for build videos using these things. However, in order to make those videos, I first had to unlock all the rewards I wanted. And that meant either outright buying them with atoms or grinding away every single day until I earned them all. <laughs> well, let me tell you. The release of the first season was very bad timing for me. It was during a month where my family planned a week-long vacation without access to my Xbox. And then after that, I had also scheduled three major dental surgeries that required recovery time. So I basically ended up skipping about three weeks worth of days in the season. And that was too many days to make up before the season ended because you can only earn so much score per day. But let me tell you, that first season, I really did try to get as far as possible so that maybe I could at least afford to buy the remaining levels after it was over, because they were all going to become available to buy with Adams at the end of the season. So, <laughs> once again, I was back to my daily grind, only this time earning a score instead of Adams. And this time it was even worse, because the new challenges often took longer than the older challenges, and it was... It, it was more demoralizing as well, since originally you would earn atoms for each challenge completed. And so you had an instant reward for your effort, and then you could spend those atoms on whatever you wanted, and not spend them on the things you didn't want. But with the seasons, you earn only score that goes toward your score meter, or whatever they call it. And then eventually, once you earn enough score after completing multiple challenges, you will rank up and you can unlock one level and whatever prize goes with it, whether you want it or not. You know, however, I didn't want every single reward they offered. I couldn't care less about the weapon and armor skins or the icons or the photo mode frames or whatever else. I only wanted the workshop items and maybe the atoms. 
<laughs> but out of 100 levels, there might be like 10 workshop items spread fairly evenly throughout. So by the time I finally unlocked the items I really wanted, I'd spent hours upon hours of time grinding for score. And if I had been spending that time grinding for atoms and those rewards were available in the atom shop, I would have been able to afford them several times over. So after a while, I just started getting very run down. I actually started to feel physically exhausted from the constant push to get score as fast as possible. It's all I did in the game. And I would spend probably about three hours a day on it since I had two accounts. And it took about an hour and a half per account. You know, and this was time I could have spent, could have been spending designing new builds for videos. You know, as I, I didn't have any other time that I could do that too. Uh, those, those three hours were the only time I had in my schedule to be in the game for any reason. So back when I was saying that I wasn't making build videos because I didn't have time, this was the main reason. Although there was some also personal life, real life stuff going on at the time that that was also a reason, but this was a big, a big part of it. Um, I didn't have time to make build videos because I was too busy grinding for score so I could earn enough to buy the items that I wanted to make videos with. <laughs> it was a vicious cycle. And, and yeah, I, it literally physically wore me out and I started feeling almost a kind of depression over it. I noticed I wasn't as happy as I used to be. I was constantly frustrated and lacked inspiration for practically everything I had going on in my life because I was so focused and concerned about earning score. Ugh. Well, <laughs> obviously I couldn't continue this way for very long, you know, so I decided to stop. You know, I knew I couldn't finish the season in time, even if that's all I did. I had missed too many days and I couldn't make them up in time. So I thought maybe I would just buy the rest of the season, the rest, you know, after the season ended. But once that happened, I discovered that you can't buy only the ranks you want. You have to buy all of them, basically. I wanted to buy the greenhouse build set, which was like level 99 or something, level 100. I think I stopped playing around level 45, you know, in order to buy that greenhouse set. I would have to buy all 55 unearned ranks before it. And they were 150 atoms per rank. You guys, that greenhouse set was going to cost me over $80. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you how much that wasn't worth it. <laughs> you know, since I, I didn't care about any of the other stuff I would be forced to buy. So I just didn't do it. I didn't get the greenhouse set. So then life returned to normal for a while, you know, in between seasons. Um, but then season two came and, and, you know, I thought maybe this time I'll make it. You know, especially since season two had several workshop items I really wanted and had cool ideas for. So back to the grinding I went. And this time it was even harder and took even longer because Bethesda introduced the new ops missions. But instead of just letting us play the ops missions whenever we felt like it, they made them a daily challenge to complete an ops mission so you can earn score from it. And so we were basically forced to play them if we wanted to keep ahead on the scoreboard. And so it wasn't long before I was totally and utterly sick of doing that. Because the ops missions for me, personally, is something that I would do occasionally, maybe. I'm, I don't enjoy doing the same thing over and over again every single day in a game. Um, especially if the game f basically forces you to do it, which is probably another reason why the, the daily challenges wore me out a lot is because they were fairly repetitive. And so the ops missions, you know, I would probably do them once in a while just for fun if I, if I had a friend on and we were doing them together. But to do them every day or else not get the score that they that they awarded, um, yeah, I just don't like that. <laughs> so yeah, I I got really tired of it really fast. And I think I got to rank 20 something before I just quit the season. I it just wasn't worth it, you guys. I, I was ruining my life over this. So 
I just had to decide that it didn't matter anymore. And while it was a relief, it wasn't a happy relief, if that makes any sense. It's hard it's hard to explain how it made me feel. I still felt like I was missing out, especially since all my friends were doing a really great job keeping up with the season themselves and earning all the cool things, which I got to see them build in their camps, but they couldn't build them in my camp because, you know, they're considered Adam shop items. And the only reason I was even doing this was so that I could make content for my channel. You know, if I was just playing for fun and had no channel to think about, I probably would never have worried about the seasons to begin with. Because personally, I didn't really care about this stuff. Um, I just wanted it for the channel. I've never been um, affected by the fear of losing out. You know, I, I, I've never, I don't know, just for some reason, it's never bothered me my whole life. I've just never really cared about being the odd one out and not having the cool stuff. I I would get the stuff that I wanted and then I didn't care about trying to, you know, have everything and, and be the one who had, you know, all the cool things in their camp or whatever. So if, yeah, if I hadn't had the channel, I probably wouldn't have bothered. I would have just done it casually at my own pace. And if I didn't make it to the end, then I didn't make it. And it wouldn't have mattered. But for because of the channel, I, I felt this immense pressure to to get it all so that I could make videos with it. Anyway, believe it or not, this wasn't the last straw that I mentioned earlier. No, the last straw came with the update where they changed the enemy levels so that they spawn at your level. So if you're level one, all the enemies will be level one, at least in the forest. And if you're level 10, all the enemies will be level 10. And if you're level 50, all the enemies will be level 50 or higher. All enemies. So in the forest, since all my characters were over level 50, all of the enemies were over level 50. Even rad roaches. Even iBots. I mean, before that update, there wasn't a single iBot in the game that was over level 1. Even high level areas. And now we've suddenly got level 50 iBots everywhere. <sighs> Let me tell you, I instantly hated this update as it made my professional life a living hell. <laughs> you know, I always build my camps in the forest because it's the lowest level area and I didn't have to worry about enemies while in my camp. You know, if they spawned there, it wasn't a big deal to take them out. Just a couple quick pops in vats and I could be on my way, right? I never enjoyed building my camps in higher level areas because it just took too much effort to keep the baddies out of my stuff. You know, and I and I have enough stress in the game already. I don't need more. <laughs> Building in the forest gave me a calm, peaceful place I could return to after spending an hour exploring more dangerous areas. And it worked great that way. My camp felt like home. I felt safe there. But the enemy level update changed that. It made the forest just as dangerous as any other part of the game, especially for my lower level characters. Um... You know, now there was nowhere on the map where I could go to get away from the high-level enemies. Nowhere I could go to just take a breather. Not even to my own camp. Because guaranteed, I would be fighting level 50 mongrel dogs every time I went back there. Now, this wasn't a huge issue for my level 200 character. But for my level 25 builder character, or my level 50 alt character on my Karen account, which I used to earn atoms and score for the Karen account, you know, it was a big deal. Because anyone who has played Fallout 76 knows that a level 25 character up against a level 25 anything else is a pretty tough fight. You know, level 25 characters and even level 50 characters don't have the best gear yet and, and don't have all of the perks yet. And so I felt pretty useless against enemies that I should be able to one shot. You know, it, it really shouldn't take five shots to kill a rad roach. Come on! <laughs> I actually failed the event leader of the pack several times because the wolves were too tough and I couldn't kill them all fast enough before the timer ran out. And that didn't used to happen before. Leader of the pack had always been one of the easiest challenges to do at any level because the wolves had always been level five at the most. So this update made grinding for score way harder because it took a lot longer to complete challenges and events. 
Plus, you ended up using way more ammo than before and having to repair your guns more often. And I would end each session feeling completely exhausted and frustrated. And, you know, the this change with the, the leveling change, the enemy level change, it probably wouldn't have bothered me as much if I had just been playing casually. Again, I'm... I'm looking, I'm coming from, I, I hope you can understand my perspective here. I'm not complaining about this as a casual player, okay? As a casual player, I would feel completely different about it. Um, probably wouldn't mind most of this stuff as much as I do. So don't take this as a honest review of the game, because it's not. This is not a review of the game coming from the the perspective of a casual player. This is this is coming from the perspective of a quote unquote professional player, um, where I'm doing it as a job and not as just casual fun. So anything that makes my job harder is going to be frustrating. So just understand that. Don't misunderstand what I am complaining about here or, or saying. Don't use this as a way to judge the game for yourself on whether or not you would enjoy it. Because unless you're playing it professionally, um, you're not going to feel the same way about it as I do, probably. I mean, I, you might, you might, you might not like these changes either. And I know, I know people who didn't like these changes, but I don't know anybody who hated them as much as I do. <laughs> um, I'm sure there are people out there who do, I just don't know anybody. Um, anyways, so I just wanted to put that little disclaimer there. Uh, yeah, I'm not complaining about these changes, um, on a personal level. It's more of a professional level. Okay. And anyway, so because of all of this, I started to pull back from the game a little bit. You know, I just had to distance myself. And on the one hand, I guess I did it so that I wouldn't see what I was missing from the scoreboard, maybe. <laughs> and on the other hand, just because I felt better when I wasn't playing it. I would still get on a couple times a week if my friends were on so that I could play with them. But since they were doing the challenges and the ops missions, you know, that's what I ended up doing too. But I did them more casually after that, without the pressure of, of earning as much score as possible. Since I'd already given up that idea, I'd already decided I'm not going to do the seasons anymore. I just can't. So it wasn't horrible. Like I said, once I started playing casually and stopped worrying about the professional side of it, it got to be um, less frustrating, I guess. But eventually I just, I just stopped getting on the game altogether, especially after season two ended and my friends took a break from the game as well between seasons. So I... I, I went on and started playing other games like Ark and even Skyrim. And let me tell you guys, the relief I felt when I decided to give up on Fallout 76 was the biggest relief I have felt in a long time. And I, I get emotional think, uh, talking about it <laughs> because of how much it affected me. And, you know, it might, it might sound silly to some of you. Like, how could I let a game get to me this much? How could I put so much importance on this kind of thing? And, you know, this frustration that I had with the game, you know, the way it made me feel, it happened so gradually that it didn't, uh, I didn't see it coming. I didn't notice it happening. It's, it's like the frog in the pot, right? <laughs> it doesn't know it's in danger until the water boils, and by then it's too late. You know, that's what it was like. And again, it was all for the channel. Because build videos have been the bread and butter of this channel for, well, since almost the beginning. You know, I didn't start the channel with build videos. I started it with Let's Plays, actually. It's what I really wanted to do originally. But build videos are what grew my channel. If I had stuck to only Let's Plays all these years, I would have way less subscribers, I'm pretty sure. And my build videos have always gotten way more views than my Let's Plays. So in order to keep my channel going and growing at a decent rate, there was always that 
pressure to put out frequent build videos. And you know, back back at the beginning, that, that wasn't hard to do, don't get me wrong. I was inspired to build in Fallout 4. I was always making up cool new things, and you know, that eventually did fade. You know, I eventually ran out of inspiration in Fallout 4 because you just eventually feel like you built everything new, everything different. And you just, I just started feeling like I couldn't build anything unique anymore without repeating myself. Uh, you know, but Fallout 76 quickly took its place with all new stuff to build, all new locations to build in, and that lasted a long time. Maybe not as long as Fallout 4, but still, it kept the channel going for another year or so. Two years, huh? And now that even my inspiration for building in Fallout 76, and even playing Fallout 76, is gone, well, it's been discouraging, to say the least. Now, I came to a point where I was starting to wonder if my channel was done. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. There were many times over the last few months or so where I was despairing over my channel. And, and seeing my views go down to just a few hundred per video, where they used to be several thousands, and seeing patrons that have been supporting me for so long leaving... You know, I was losing patrons faster than I could gain new ones. And my channel and my Patreon is making a fraction of the money that it used to make. And, and I don't blame anybody for canceling their Patreon. So don't, don't think that I'm trying to guilt trip anyone because that is the last thing I want to do. I totally understand that things happen. There's many reasons why someone would cancel their Patreon subscription. And, you know, not the least of which is that I haven't been producing the type of content that a lot of you guys probably signed up for. And, and I wouldn't expect anyone to pay for something that they're not getting. So I don't blame you guys at all. <laughs> but regardless, it still does contribute to the overall feeling that my channel is dying. And <sighs> this has been hard to watch. And I didn't know what to do about it. Do I continue to play a game that I've come to, well, basically hate? <laughs> Just to produce content to keep the views up? No. I can't do that. I can't keep it up. I can't sacrifice my own happiness just to make content for a channel that was supposed to be a fun hobby, right? <laughs> and so then what? I have been struggling with that question uh, for a few months now, ever since I stopped uh, playing Fallout 76. And since I stopped playing Fallout 76, well, I have been so much happier, personally, and, and I just, I feel this strange freedom that I wasn't expecting to feel. It's like a weight was lifted off my shoulders and I, and I could breathe again. But, but I didn't know what to do instead. So uh, I just bided my time for a while. Um, for the last few months or so, I've just been uploading my regular Let's Plays and, you know, just keeping, you know, something on the channel. <laughs> And then, I, and then I started focusing on other things for a while. The things I never had time for because I was too busy grinding in Fallout 76. I started writing again. Um, in real life, I'm a writer trying to get a book published. But I was so busy with Fallout 76 that I didn't have time to write. <laughs> Horrible, right? So, um, and I also had time for other projects just for the fun of it. I started sewing again. I used to sew all the time, but I haven't in years since I started my channel, basically. Um, I ended up sewing hundreds of face masks to donate, and I had the time of my life doing it. It was so fun. I started reading books again, and I can't even remember the last time I sat down and read a book. <laughs> I started to feel like I actually had a life, and I was so much happier. And you know what? I found myself not even missing Fallout 76. Not even a little bit. Season 3 started, the new Brotherhood of Steel DLC came out. And I never got on the game to check them out. And I didn't care. And to this day, I still haven't done the Brotherhood of Steel DLC or even, like, went in the game to even see what's different. You know, I, haven't, I haven't played Fallout 76 since August, at least. Except for once a week to record an episode of the roleplay. The, the roleplay is, is different. It's, it's fun. You know, probably because I'm playing with friends and because I'm just playing and not trying to get something done as fast as possible. And so the Fallout 76 roleplay will continue. Have no fear of that. 
I think if I had been playing Fallout 76 just for fun and not for the channel all this time, I would probably still be playing it today. I probably wouldn't have gotten as frustrated as I did. I, I would have gotten frustrated to some degree simply because I don't think a lot of the changes have been positive. Still, I, I, I do believe that. Um, I think the game has gone in a direction that departs from the classic Bethesda RPG. It feels, it feels more and more like a mobile game in the way challenges and rewards are handled. And it, it, it turns me off to it. That, that does just by itself. It's, it's all about reward. That's all the game is about. It's about reward and it's about flashy images and sound effects and just rewards, bling, bling, bling everywhere. So it's not immersive whatsoever. <laughs> I think Bethesda is handling the game completely wrong, to be honest. I I think they're misunderstanding the type of content we actually want. At least, you know, this is just my opinion. I would prefer updates and features that enhance the role play and the exploration aspect of the game, rather than just the superficial bells and whistles that they have been giving us. But, you know, that that is a whole other topic that I really don't want to get into here. <laughs> so anyway, I... I've told you all of this, and, and I'm sorry that I've gone on so long with it. If you're still listening and haven't skipped forward, then you're a saint and I love you. But I just, I just really needed to get all of this out and let you guys know just what's been going on with me and, and why my content has been kind of, well, kind of static, I guess you could say. This was the reason. <laughs> So where does that leave me? You know, where does that leave the channel? You're probably wondering that this whole time. Well, to be honest, I have many times over the last few months seriously considered folding the channel. Simply because I couldn't, I could not see a way forward, you guys. I couldn't see a way out of this slump that I was in. Suffice it to say, if I'm not playing Fallout 76, then I'm not making any new build videos. And if I'm not making build videos, then what is my channel about? You know, like I said, build videos have been the bread and butter of my channel almost since the beginning. Without them, what is my channel? Well, so these last few months have given me a lot of extra time to just think about this and really look hard at my channel and what I originally started it for in the first place. What makes me the happiest? What content do I enjoy making the most? It would probably surprise a lot of you to know that it was never building. I started the channel as a way to share with my friends my gameplay of Fallout 4. I had no idea at the time that it would get so much attention. And it probably wouldn't have gotten so much attention if I hadn't decided to do a blind playthrough of the then brand new Vault Tech DLC. Which was never intended to be a tutorial, by the way. <laughs> but people think it's a tutorial, and so they get frustrated that I don't seem to know what I'm doing in those videos. Guys, it was a blind playthrough of a brand new DLC. Of course, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> anyway, the point is, my first love was just playing the game and making videos of it. And the more I played the game for the channel, the more I got into role-playing. And if any of you have watched my Shane playthrough, you know what I mean, that that playthrough changed a lot from the beginning to the end. I roleplayed more and more as I went along, and by the end I was hardly ever leaving character, and I was adding little extra bits for realism and whatnot, you know, as much as I could within the limits of the PS4 anyway. And since I started playing Fallout 4 on the PC, it's only improved more in the roleplay department. My second Fallout 4 roleplay with Ellie Archer was a huge leap forward, I think, and it has become my most viewed playthrough of any game in the entire history of my channel, you know, rivaling even some of my build videos in, in, in number of views. I loved making my Ellie Archer playthrough. I felt such a huge sense of accomplishment after finishing each episode. I felt like I was making something really creative, not just gameplay, but telling a story. You know, and as a writer, telling stories is what I like to do best. You know, sure, I, I might be a good builder in Fallout, and I might be able to come up with some cool stuff, but it's telling stories and acting them out that I love doing the most. You know, to put it simply, building was for the views and the money, but role-playing was for the pure joy of it. And 
I know I mentioned in a channel update before that I that I put the Fallout 4 roleplay on a break because I was too burned out and frustrated. It wasn't really burnout, I guess. It was mostly just frustration and stress because I was they are difficult episodes to make. They're they're pretty involved. Um but my frustration wasn't with the game Fallout 4 or with the series itself. My frustration was with my lack of time because I was too busy with Fallout 76. I was too busy grinding in Fallout 76 and I didn't have as much time to make my other videos. That's what was happening there. So Fallout 76 was even affecting my other videos and my ability to make them in a timely manner. Anyway, um, so over the last few months, I've gradually come to understand this more and more, this, this fact that what I really love the most to do on my channel is the role playing. Um, especially after starting up a new Skyrim game, um, I, as I was, after I stopped playing Fallout 76, I got nostalgic for Skyrim. And so I, I started a new game. Um, and I hadn't played it like in three years before that. And I just let myself get lost in the world of Skyrim again. And I just, I realized how much I loved, uh, role-playing again. It, like, it just sort of refreshed me, I guess. <laughs> and so my thoughts started to go from... My channel is dying, should I just quit, to what do I really want from my channel? What makes me happy? Do the views and money really matter if I'm killing myself to get them? No, <laughs> absolutely not. This channel is not worth it if I'm not enjoying it. And really, the only thing keeping me here all these months was you guys. The community that I built over the last few years, and especially the one on Discord where I've made many friends. You know, I didn't want to just up and quit on you guys. You know, so many of you have put a lot of time and money into my channel, and I didn't want to just throw all that away. So something drastic needs to happen now. And I figured out what it needs to be. And after all these months of, of self-examination, I finally know what to do to not only save my channel, but save my sanity too. So here it is. The part you've probably all been waiting for. And if you've been listening up until this point, you might have already figured it out. But for those of you who have skipped to this point, I'll spell it out. The big changes coming to my channel. Build videos and tips and tricks videos in Fallout are gone. They will no longer be showing up on my channel for an undetermined amount of time. And you know, there may be some exceptions. I'm not just going to put my foot down and say absolutely no more build videos because if I do get some sort of unexpected burst of inspiration for something, I'm not going to stop myself from making a video about it. But I'm removing the expectation from me and from you guys that there will be build videos on my channel from now on. And if someday Bethesda decides to grace us with Fallout 5, <laughs> I will definitely be all over it making new videos because I'll be excited about it and inspired, and I'll want to. You know, and even Elder Scrolls 6, especially if it has a building feature, which I most certainly hope it does. <laughs> so someday there will be build videos on my channel again, probably. I just don't know when that will be. It really is up to Bethesda. <laughs> so now some of you who haven't figured it out yet might be wondering what I'm going to do instead because I'm not folding my channel, far from it. I'm actually planning on gradually increasing my content if I can, um, but that content is going to focus on what I love the most about Bethesda games, and that is the role play. I am going to transition my channel into a role play channel. You know, my already published building content and tips and tricks aren't going anywhere, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not removing that stuff. I'm just not going to be publishing any new stuff like that. I will be focusing only on role plays and let's plays from now on. So, what is that going to look like? <laughs> well, I will of course be continuing the series that I've got going right now. Uh, those are the Fallout 76 role play and The Last of Us 2 uh, let's play. But I will also be bringing back my Fallout 4 role play with Ellie Archer, and I'm going to be starting a new role play in Skyrim. Um, 
I'm not going to be bringing back Colum. I think Colum's story is over. I mean, I did finish the game with him. I, I just didn't do the DLC, but I think that's okay. The reason I don't want to bring back Cal is because that playthrough wasn't a hardcore roleplay. Um, and by hardcore, I mean being in character 100% of the time and sticking to that character in actions, um, options, decisions, and so forth 100% of the time. It was more about playing the game as a certain character, but not being the character. Do you know what I mean? It, it was a more casual let's play slash role play, sort of on and off kind of thing. Um, if you watched my Skyrim let's play, or even my first Fallout 4 play with Shane, as well as my Fallout 4 play with Ellie Archer, you know what I mean. They are like night and day from each other. So from now on, um, I want to up my game when it comes to role plays, at least in Bethesda games, since with mods, you can really do some amazing things in those games, making it more like TV shows than, than gameplay videos. And I just don't feel like I can do that with Cal. Um, for one, he's already had an entire season of episodes that were made in a certain way. And I would feel really weird suddenly changing that for him. Plus, he's a male character, and so I would have a harder time role-playing him realistically. Um, from now on, all of the characters that I play in Bethesda games or in games that I'm going to be role-playing, um, I'm going to be playing a female character just so that it's more realistic. So yeah, Cal is done. Cal is not coming back. When I start my new Skyrim roleplay, I will be starting fresh with a new character. And I've actually been working on this new roleplay for about a month now. I haven't recorded any episodes yet, but I've been working every day getting the character figured out, the story I want to tell, and the mod load order figured out, which is hugely time-consuming all by itself. Um, I don't know when this new Skyrim roleplay will be coming out, since I still have a lot of work um, to do on it. I'm going to actually be designing a couple mods for it myself, since there just aren't mods for some of the things that I have planned for it. I want this roleplay to go above and beyond anything I've done so far, even beyond what I've done in my LE roleplay. It's going to be more like a TV show than anything so far. It's going to be much more cinematic and story-driven. I mean, it's still going to have gameplay in it, don't get me wrong. I'm not making a completely cinematic show here. Um just, you know, to expect. It, it is going to still be a gameplay video, but I will be role-playing it always in character 100% of the time, and I will be mixing in a lot of cinematic shots and features and stuff like that to make it more like a TV show and less like a gameplay video. You know, so because of that, it's taking a lot more planning than a regular Let's Play would, because I'm not just going to turn on the game and play randomly. I'm I'm actually going to be telling a story within the game. And this, and I want you guys to know in advance that this role play isn't going to be about playing the game, okay? It's going to be about the story that I'm trying to tell with the character. And so it's it's going to be a little bit different and it might take a little bit of getting used to because I'm not I'm not going to be focusing on gameplay features. I'm not going to be showing my leveling up. I'm not going to be um I might not even have the HUD on, just for complete immersion. I've been practicing playing without the HUD, and man, it's... I don't know if you guys have ever done that before, played without the HUD. It's, uh, it's different. It immerses you so much more than ever before, and I've actually really been enjoying it. Without the HUD on, you can't look at objects and instantly know what they are because it doesn't say anything when you look at objects. It just, you have to just identify it with your eyes like you do in real life. And so it's more immersive that way. You can't look at a person and instantly know their name. You won't know their name unless they tell you what it is. And that's what it's like in real life. You don't go up to somebody and see text floating over their head says what their name is. <laughs> so it's just more immersive. That's more realistic that way. And I know Skyrim as a game um, inside and out. I've played Skyrim so many times, I can't even count how many. I, I put thousands and thousands and thousands of hours into Skyrim. And so I know the game so well that I can play it without the HUD and still, you know, not be completely lost, right? So I'm considering doing my roleplay without the HUD on. And I'm going to be using um, some cool mods and stuff for immersion and whatnot. And, you know, I'll... 
I'll get into that more um, in other future updates, channel updates. Um, it's still a little bit too early to tell you guys um, more details about this because it's still in pre-production, you might say. Uh, and I've also got some really cool things in the works for it that I definitely can't tell you guys about yet since they aren't a for sure thing yet. And it involves some collaboration with other people. And I don't have those collaborations nailed down yet. So I'll be keeping that to myself for now. But you can rest assured uh, that I will tell you guys all about it as soon as I can. So yeah, I can't tell you exactly when the new Skyrim roleplay will be out. It will be a while still. But I definitely am planning for it to be sometime in the first half of this year, hopefully. And I'm really crossing my fingers for that. Because it all really depends on so many factors that could slow it down. But it is going to happen, hopefully this year. Um, you know, because this, this is what I'm most passionate about right now. Really is practically all I can think about these days. And I, and I really just can't wait to start recording episodes. I'm, I'm just going to have so much fun with this. But in the meantime, I will be starting up the Fallout 4 roleplay again for Season 2, like I already said. And that will be coming out sooner. But again, I, I don't have a date for that one yet. You know, I want to record a large backlog of episodes first. Um, I never did record any more episodes after Season 1 ended. And I told you guys I was going to record a bunch of episodes and make a backlog and then start Season 2. I never did it. I never recorded any more. Um, I kind of just took a break, just 100% didn't go back into the game again after that. Uh, mainly because I was too busy with Fallout 76 and I just needed a break. And so I haven't recorded any more episodes. I don't have any. So I want to record a backlog for those um, first. And so that will take a little while, um, but not as long of a while as the Skyrim one. So... Um, and until then, I hope you guys can continue to enjoy the Fallout 76 roleplay and The Last of Us 2 Let's Play until it's over. That one's almost over, probably. But anyways, now that I'm focusing on only Let's Plays and roleplays, it opens my channel up for way more content um, and way more regular content. Um, general Let's Plays are so easy to produce and fun, too. And role, role plays are much harder to produce, so I probably won't want to have more than two of those on my channel at a time. Um, simply because it would be too time consuming to do more than that. Um, but, I, but I could also have potentially two or three regular Let's Plays going on in addition to the role plays. And by regular Let's Plays, I mean just me playing the game and not role playing, like I'm doing with The Last of Us 2 uh, right now. And, oh, you guys, having made the decision to implement these changes has made me fall in love with my channel again. It's made me excited to produce content again. I'm excited, you guys. I can't tell you how huge this is. I have a really hard time expressing just how... Oh, oh. <laughs> I haven't been excited for anything on my channel in a long time. I should have done this ages ago, really. I should have. Now, I am not unaware. Um, I do realize that I will probably lose some subscribers over this, um, and even patrons. Because I know that a lot of you only follow me for my build videos and never watch my Let's Plays. And to you guys, I, I do apologize. I don't blame you if you decide to leave. You know, I myself have stopped watching many channels over the years uh, because they stopped producing the content I subscribed for. Now, I, of course, do hope that you stick around and give my role plays a chance. But, you know, if you move on, I wish you all the best. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting me till now. I have kept my channel going this long for you guys. But now, in order to keep it going, I have to do it for me, okay? And I hope you guys can understand that. Anyway, so that is my very long story of how I got to this place. And I, I hope you guys don't mind me going into so much detail about this. I just really needed to get it all off my chest because it has been a great burden. But I'm excited for the future of my channel now. 
This new path opens up so many opportunities to play other games that I never had time to play on my channel before. And even other types of playthroughs, like, like Permadeath, for instance. Would any of you guys be interested in a Permadeath, Fallout 4, or Skyrim series? I could also play other Bethesda games, like Fallout 3 or New Vegas, you know? I could, I could play new games that are coming out, or even old games, like, I don't know, Dragon Age or Assassin's Creed or whatever, any number of, of things. Now, you know, obviously I still have to pace myself. I won't be able to play all of those right off the bat or all at once. But the options are much greater. Um, and my channel will be more flexible for them because I won't be spending time making build videos, which were extremely time consuming to make and prevented me from having more other types of videos. So now that the build videos are gone, I'll have so much more time for the types of videos that I really enjoy. Um, I would love to hear what you guys would like to watch me play. You know, post some ideas for me down in the comments and I will consider them. Anyway, that is about all of the things I had to talk about in this channel update. <laughs> this very long channel update. Let me know what your thoughts are about all of this down in the comments. Are you excited by this? Disappointed by it? You know, I, I love to know either way. I really want your guys' feedback. Um, this is a big deal for me. I Even after I got the idea to do this, I, I balked at it for a while. I balked at it for a long time. I, I thought, well, that's just, I don't know if my viewers are going to like that. But in the end, it's either this or nothing. It's come to that point, you guys. It's, it's either this or nothing. And I'd rather do this than nothing. So, anyway, so that's basically it. Um, don't forget that I have a subscriber Discord server. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. It's free to join, and you can go there and chat with fellow subscribers, and even me, as I post on there now and then when I have time. And, you know, it's where you can hear the most up-to-date news about me and my channel. So if you want to keep up to date with the progress of my new role plays that are going to be coming out, probably you'll hear about it first there on, on the Discord. And also, if you're interested in playing ARK with fellow subscribers and potentially with me as well, you can join our patrons only ARK server. It's, it's quite an active place right now. All the details on how to do that are in the description as well. And if you'd like to get your hands on some Wasteland Dovahkiin merch, like t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, socks, and a bunch of other stuff, you can check out my Teespring shop with the link below. It's, it's just another way to support my channel and get something cool for yourself as well. And be sure to follow me on social media uh, to keep up to date with what's going on with me and the channel. Um, you know, because I'm, I'm definitely going to be posting updates on my progress with the new content as I go along. Especially on my Discord, like I said. So go check those out. Um, well, that's going to do it for this video, everyone. I will be posting my end of the year Q&A video very soon. Not sure when I'm posting this one, though. <laughs> um, so it could be tomorrow. could be in a day or two. But anyway, look for it soon. I asked you guys to submit questions for the Q&A, and so I will be answering all those in that video. So stay tuned for that. So until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a happy new year. And until next time, remember to play safe, play nice, and have fun.